In this lecture, we'll look at globalization and why it's important for anthropology. Globalization refers to the ongoing phenomenon where interaction between people all across the world are becoming more frequent and easier. Globalization has numerous facets and consequences, but in brief, the people living across the globe today are in better contact with one another than ever before. That contact is becoming easier at a rapidly increasing pace. Globalization is often thought of as a modern phenomenon. Anthropologists argue that it's always been ongoing. People have always been in contact with their neighbors, and thus, by extension, in contact with their neighbors' neighbors, and so on down the line. Only the intensity and pace of globalization has changed. Globalization and anthropology are strongly interrelated to one another. In general, anthropology is interested in studying people and their daily lives. Since people across the globe are affected daily by globalization, anthropologists are naturally interested in globalization. Furthermore, anthropologists point out that we are all more connected than we realize. As we saw at the beginning of our lecture, even something as simple as the coke that we drink connects us with production plants across the globe. If we want to understand people and their cultures, we need to understand globalization and its effects. As anthropologists, we also must be aware that anthropology developed out of an increased globalization. The European colonial era that brought Europeans in contact with indigenous groups around the globe and thus inspired anthropological origins is a direct example of increased globalization. Anthropology's relationship with globalization can sometimes be a struggle. Anthropologists have generally been advocates for the preservation and protection of local cultures. However, the societal pressures that are threatening local cultures are part of the same movement that brought anthropologists to the region in the first place. Everything from the telegraph to the internet has increased the speed and quality of communication, not to mention the ease of access. Today, internet access has reached a majority of the globe. Even in many poorer countries, one can find internet cafes, where for a minimal fee, people can use the internet. Since the origin of the internet, the rise of social media has undoubtedly had the greatest impact on increased communication. Much of that communication may be in the form of cat pictures, but it is still communication. The term time-space compression refers to the emergent transportation and communication technologies that allow easier contact across the globe. Our ability to interact with people across the globe in terms of time and difficulty of travel has changed drastically over the last 200 years. Flexible accumulation refers to the ability of people and, in particular, companies to be more flexible in how they accumulate profits. Manufacturing in early periods of time was necessarily local. Without cheap and efficient means of transportation and communication, all production had to be centrally located. Improved transportation has allowed companies instead to diversify their production to best suit their abilities to make a profit. Thus, raw material, labor, and production facilities can be located in different countries around the world. Locations may be all based on where they were the most efficient or the cheapest. For example, the American automaker General Motors used to produce all of its cars in Flint, Michigan. Now it has production facilities in Mexico, Brazil, China, and Thailand. Globalization, particularly recently, has also led to increased immigration. Simply put, as transportation becomes easier and cheaper to access, people can more easily move to where there are jobs, or at least where it is perceived that there are jobs. The United States is embroiled in complex immigration issues involving immigrants from Mexico and Latin American nations for this very reason. Immigration internal to a country can also be a powerful force. In recent decades, many nations have seen increased immigration into rural areas to urban areas. Again, the immigration is largely motivated by perceived access to jobs. 
Emigration has significant impact on cultures and family relationships. As a result, it is a topic of great interest among anthropologists. Despite rapid improvements in technology and communications, the effect of globalization can be highly uneven. Depending on global demand and resource availability, entire regions can be simply bypassed by the forces of globalization. If a region does not have resources deemed valuable at the moment, and or if laws or customs are unfavorable to foreign factories, they may be built elsewhere. In contrast, India has become a global hub for call centers because of the prevalence of English speakers within the nation. They have thus passed by other nations that may have similarly benefited from such employment opportunities. Globalization and its surrounding developments occur based on short-term needs. This occurs often with no eye for stability or long-term benefits. The speed of technological transformation has been increasing exponentially. The pure speed of changes that have been wrought has had profound impacts on the world. Much of the social revolution that began in 2011, known today as the Arab Spring, were the result of social media. People were able to organize protests faster than governments could react. This was thanks to quick and cheap communications made possible by social media. In other countries, cell phones are beginning to appear in places where landlines have never reached. The expense of installing a telephone infrastructure has been too great for many countries around the world. Cell phone infrastructures is notably cheaper, thus allowing technology to skip a generation. A base cause of globalization is the human ability to adapt to the natural world. Most biological species are restricted to a limited ecological zone. However, human beings have been able to colonize the entire planet, even extending to permanent occupations on Antarctica. In part, humans have been able to spread throughout the world due to biological adaptations. For example, variation in skin color developed due to the effects of UV radiation exposure and vitamin B production. But even more so, humans have been able to spread throughout the world due to cultural adaptations. We learned to make clothing and build shelters. Our long ago ancestors mastered control of fire. These cultural adaptations are what have truly allowed humans to adapt to the natural world across the planet. While adapting to the natural world, humans have also become a force to shape the natural world. As the human population has grown and expanded, it has had an ever-increasing effect on the world around it. From the very beginning, we have gathered plants and hunted animals. For the last 5,000 years or so, many human beings have been clearing fields for agriculture. Ever since the Industrial Revolution, we have been adding an ever-increasing supply of airborne pollutants to the atmosphere. Today, these cumulative changes are having definitive impacts on the planet's natural climate changes. In some cases, these changes are endangering human life itself. The increased technological changes driven by the processes of globalization has begun to have clear impacts on climate. This is the most evident in the polar regions where polar ice and glaciers are melting at alarming rates. Approximately half of the world's human population lives within 50 miles of the ocean. Melting ice and the subsequent rise in sea levels are problems that humans must face. Humans thrive at adapting to the natural world. As we saw, it is a key component to globalization. However, the extreme changes threatened by climate change will require extreme changes.